I am uh, Nicolas Bornels of Capital Inc. And I would like to welcome you to a very, very uh, important and interesting panel. We have with us uh, leading Chinese ship owners who participate in the global uh, maritime markets. And they are going to share their insight on uh, the industry. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Bill Guo, the executive director of shipping from ICBC Leasing. Uh, for helping to put this panel together and, of course, to moderate it. So, again, thank you to all four of you. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I will let you now continue the discussion. Uh, it will be in Chinese. Uh, I will be paying full attention. Thank you, Nicola. Respectful leaders, respectful guests, and actually, we are very honored to be able to attend the panel discussion powered by Capital Link. Actually, we're honored to have Mr. Go, Mr. Ding Lei, and also Mr. Gu. And also, we are honored to invite all of you to be here. The four of you, four of you are from the logistics and also the uh, cargo giants company. This panel discussion, basically, in order to make it easier to, for all of us to communicate, I prepared several questions. So please, according to the sequence, could you please answer the question first? So now, we still haven't controlled the COVID-19, but China is really good. But the pandemic is spreading over the world. But actually, for your companies, I think that I wonder what the COVID-19 is going to impact about on your company. Thank Hello, everyone. I'm really honored to have this opportunity to share with all of you to talk about my ideas, just for reference. As you know, that COVID-19 has impacted heavily on the global economy. So normally, the whole industry is now impacted. So normally, the supply chain has been affected and BDIA index up to now, normally it reduced by 23%. And I think that the whole industry has been affected very seriously. On the other hand, just because of COVID-19, actually the risk of the market has been increased. And the third one, as you can see that we have multiple delays of the crew, ships, and the personnel, lives and work have been hard hit. These are actually, I mean, these. this leads to real large wastage of energy and time. We have difficulties, but in the process of fighting against the difficulties, we must overcome a lot of difficulties. And actually, the challenges are now incoming. This is all about my sharing. So how would you like to share some sight, some insight? So Mr. Gu, normally we are facing a lot of difficulties for our company. The difficulty is all about operation. Actually, the economy was really awful in the first half of this year. Normally, we have mild recovery of the economy just because we have recovered our production. But now, looking at the whole market, the COVID-19 is still in fluctuation and volatility. And actually, in India and Brazil and the US, the cases of the COVID-19 have been increasing. This is able to lead to quite a lot of uncertainties in China. But overly speaking, I think that the second half, I mean, the market in the second half of this year would be much better than the, how it was in the first half. Another thing is that you can see that just because of a geographical impact, the geographical impact has led to some outcomes to our own industry. Normally, it's really influential to the operation of the industry. We have fluctuation and volatility and also the uncertainties in the market. It could be very difficult in China. And in terms of the iteration of the management, just because besides from 
uh, Chinese crew members. We have a lot of crew members from India and Philippines. And just because of the uncertainties of the Philippines, normally the shift, it's really hard to do. And, and also at the same time, and I mean that all, a lot of personnel are stressed out. The last of all is about a cost. So you can see that the industry, the our counterparts, have been seriously affected by the COVID-19. And as you can see that crew ships, some ships need to have shipped together. Just because of the delay of the route, normally it's really hard for us to make the shift. How would you like to speak a few words, Mr. Gao? So, how the epidemic is going to affect your company? Thank you so much. And actually, I'm a new guy in front of you. I take this opportunity to learn. I mean, I'm here to learn from you in face of the market pressure. We all feel the same way. What I want to put out is that, just like the two representatives just talked about, normally we are facing quite a lot of pressure from the market. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19, um, until now, we still haven't seen any turning point of the COVID-19. A lot of ships, normally the cruise ships are in dilemma. Just because production income or normally the issues of the cost and driving up the cost, normally we need to improve the capacity in order to lower down the cost. This is really important, but normally as companies, we are able to overcome all those companies, but actually it's involved in the lives of thousands of people, the shift of thousands of people and work of thousands of personnel. Thank you. Mr. Yang, I would like to say a few words Thank you so much, Bill. The leaders have made a really complete statement. I would like to give you a briefing on our company for this year. Normally, uh, this year has have had quite a lot of influence on the company, but there's a really large fluctuation. We have a really good start in the uh, January, but in February and, and March, we were in panic just because of really large volatility. But actually, just because of the common efforts of the whole world and also the common efforts of Chinese government, since April and also May, we have, we have, began, we have began to recover. And now we have positive growth. So obviously speaking, this year, Normally, the volume of orders have not been very seriously affected. The income hasn't been affected really seriously. And also, at the same time, as for the cost, normally we have released our pressure. Overall speaking, we don't have a really large pressure this year. The largest challenge is about the shift of the crews and crew members. So, normally, the shift it's really hard to handle in China and also the world. Just because of the support given by the Chinese government, we have resolved the issue of the shift. Normally, uh, but actually, the ships of other countries still have to come across the shift issue. And also, we have the problem of the shortage of supply for the crew members. Just because of COVID-19, a lot of people cannot go on board and they just change their jobs. And actually, as for some personnel, maybe they have been working for 11 to 12 months. Normally, they're going to have a really long break. So that's why we have a large pressure from the supply. So actually, the price of, I mean, the salary for the crew members have increased by more than 10% for long term in the future. Normally, I mean, we still face this really shortage of the supply of the crew members. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your really good work done this year. And next question, as we just mentioned, uh, the government just launched that we need to stabilize to China and also at the same time we need to open up a new development situation given, uh, given uh, with the support of China and overseas. So normally the new situation has had a really important impact on the strategy. Do you have any available strategies or tactics to give support to the 
future development. All right. The Chinese government have put forward that we need to improve the recycling of China and also so as to pave the way for the new development. This is very timely. I think that we need to utilize or give the full play to the potential of China's market, give the full play to the domestic market in order to stimulating the uh, domestic demand, we need to boost the development. And you can see that we need to have some capital support and in mineral and gas and oil in terms of the natural resources, we highly rely on import. Normally, we need to shoulder up our basic responsibilities as the maritime industry, we need to contribute to the China's economic growth so as to assure the supply of the resources. Normally, this is actually the opportunity for the industry. And when it comes to import of the food stuff, of food, normally China still heavily relies on the import of food. Uh, the problem is involved in the issue of the food safety. Normally, this is really a brand new challenge we need to overcome in a very positive way. On the other hand is that now, actually China is still in a very complicated situation, as you just mentioned, because of the geographical, ge uh, I mean, geopolitical factors or impacts. Normally, we still rely on the Australian market. Maybe in the future, we need to shift the reliance to the markets of Africa and Brazil. This is what we need to pay attention to. I think the China's enterprises, in terms of the enterprise operation, we, I mean, we need to shoulder up our own responsibilities. Actually, China's enterprises are supposed to stay in unity and the customers as for the customers, we need to strengthen our cooperation with all those customers. How about Mr. Ding? I really agree with Mr. Gu. We need to take a look at the whole situation. I mean the domestic cycle and also the overseas cycle. These are actually two methodologies. And, and since 2015, the foreign trade has has I mean a portion of the foreign trade has been reduced to a very low level. So that's why, according to the volume of China's development, I mean the foreign trade cannot support fully support the rapid growth in the future. This is the major reason. The second reason is that, overly speaking, the China's opening up and reform and also the tendency of the integration is going to continue. And this is able to boost the China's economic growth and also the industrial chain, supply chain, industrial chain is going to flow out. That's why we need to achieve the integration between the domestic, uh, the domestic cycle and also the foreign cycle. At the same time, I think China has put forward a double cycle, and previously we focused on the foreign trade development, and normally at the same time we need to strengthen the international trade, We can, and this way we are able to stimulate the China's development. Maybe we just mentioned, so actually by developing the foreign cycle and also domestic cycle for some of the private companies, we need to have support for the raw material. On the other hand, in our company, we need to do some new tries. We, we need to develop and further strengthen the export of the raw material. Normally, after we upgrade our industry for some country, for some regions, normally when they need to export a set of the equipment, normally, normally we need to improve the demand of exporting all those equipment in some regions. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Ding. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Nothing to add. How would like to have? Uh, how, how would you like to say a few words? And as you mentioned, actually, since this year, in terms of the issue of the internal cycle, actually, President Xi, in many occasions, he just mentioned we need to strengthen the integration interplay between the domestic cycle of cycling and also the foreign cycling, especially at this age stage. Uh, just because of our thinking. I really agree with the previous two guests. I think the cool idea is that we need to stay in unity and cooperation and stay in alliance. Over the past years, the cooperation and alliance are involved in the interplay among the companies for interplay among the associations. And actually, when we stay in Alliance, and also when, when it comes to when it comes to the integration of industry and also interplay among the companies, we need to pay attention to the details of cooperation. So, literally speaking, the internal cycling are based on three logics: they are consumption, export, and investment. As companies in the associations, normally we are involved. We are more oftentimes involved in investment. The investment is should be oriented to consumption, or it should be oriented to export and investment. Normally, we need to clarify our final target, or have some of the transitional target. As I just mentioned, we need to stay in unity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you, Bill. I think I mean the Chinese government put forward the internal cycling and also foreign cycling. This slogan should be. I mean, it shows that we are supposed to be a responsible, great country that should be committed to recovering the global economy. This is really important mission. Previously, we heavily relied on foreign trade and also investment. We have shortages of the domestic demand. But now, the whole globe is suffering from bad economy. As a responsible, great country, we need to take the lead in order to stimulate our own domestic economy. And then we need to have double cycling. That means that we need to drag up the global economy. This is actually a really forward-looking strategy with very great political significance. That's why, as the company and industry, we are able to benefit from the domestic demand. Once we rise up the domestic demand, we're going to have more import. Normally, if we are able to improve the cycling, double cycling, we're able to boost import and export. This is a beneficial. Uh, this is beneficial for the whole economy, com for the whole industry. As a company in the industry, what should we do? Previously, we planned the route for the cruise ships based on demand of the foreign trade, just because we heavily rely on we lie on the export, but this year we're able to see a dramatic increase in terms of the uh, import. That's why we have shifted our planning. You can see that our promotional slogan pays more attention to the import. This turns out turns out to be very effective, and also at the same time we have done some investment last week, the, the week before last week. On August 30th, normally we worked, we signed agreement with Yangzi company, totally six contracts. Normally this contract is able to contribute to the double cycling. But even though, according to the contract, normally, even though the ships are built in China, but actually the sourcing process is from the whole globe, and also we have uh, spread out our own bonus and dividend, so actually so as to allow the investors and also the shareholders to get a lot more cash, and actually we have increased the salary for our own employees 
so as to allow them to pay, to pay more. They're able to stimulate the, global, the Chinese economy. With the common efforts, I do believe that we're going to rise up the Chinese economy or even a global economy. Thank you. <clears throat> you have a lot of plausible actions. The next question. As for Gu, Mr. Gu and Ding and Gao, so we have collected some information. They care most about the common point of the three companies. You have done the long-term agreement for some project, and also you have attended the bidding for the LNG. I would like to ask three of you, more and more ship owners or foreign trade companies, they are involved in the open tender or open bidding. I, do I would like to ask, are there any specific impacts? Do you have any measures for this model? We would like to give the floor to Mr. Gao, all right? I'd also like to welcome Mr. Gao to his show. All right. Actually, actually, this model, I like to say, play the very limited impact on this bar. It is quite obvious. We all know that this bar, right, to all the supply chains, I mean, for this industry, we can also see the limited uh, impact on this bar. Beneficial for transitions or also beneficial facility as well. From this pushbacks, it is quite efficient. But also, at the very same time, I mean, for the higher demands in this part, for one side, for the implodes edging, we can feel the pressures on this part, right? And for the very, I mean, the minority transmissions, we, we still cannot ignore these impacts. So in this way, I mean, especially for the very advanced technology as well as applications, we got to have some measures on this regard. Thank you. Thank you. What about Mr. Dean? Thank you. About this project. Just now, for the supply chains, from, from the size of the supply chains, even to the uh, corporation side, actually, from my perspective, I think we try to improve the efficiency of the supply chain. That's the very important part. And the second one, for the very big size of the company, actually, for this part, they rely on special specialization as well as the very digitalizations as well. And also you can see like the company Sichuan Shipping Management uh, Company, they have found these resources to, to do these transformations, right, in this way. We need to control well about this one about the specializations, about the uh, uh, transformations as well. And due to the limitations of the technology, you can see we can, uh, we can still, we can still stand in the very limited situation than before. But for right now, we change a little bit. Even come to today's forum, we can still feel the flashing elements by this part. Targeted to the concept directions of the green side, I mean the green developments by the 2020. This is the common commitment to each other, and also we can feel the same pressures. That's all. What, what about Mr. Guo? I'd like to add something about shipping, about uh, trade connected with each other. And now you can see shipping actually serves for the trade industry. And in its way, you can see a lot of infrastructure. If there are some backfats on the, uh, I mean, the shipping industries, so does the same situations to the trade in industry, right? The, they are connecting with each other. 
In this way, we can see that for two sides, they control well about the costs. I mean, the costs are very sustainable for for two sides. And just now, Mr. Gao and mentioned this. This, I mean, Mr. Gao mentioned the supply chains. I mean, the decline of the costs, even the sustainable situations of the supply chains. Even for those part, even for this, I mean, what we can see, maybe in this way, we are. Originated to the services to all of the clients. Maybe for right now we have some、uh, fluctuation. We can get some benefits from the, from the short term, but actually we cannot ignore the, the long term issue. So in this way, we can serve for the trade industries to achieve the healthy development. I mean, in this contest, I mean, this contract with more details will gain、uh, more appreciations by more customers, and more customers may value this one. I mean, the theory are、uh, beneficial ones. Indeed, it may gain the rush pressures by this way. Indeed. Even for such a long time, right? And after that, and what? What about the future directions? What about the future side? We can still ignore this one, and also we gotta consider about the future of the shipping management of the shipping industry as well. This is the larger market. <coughs> That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guo. So each one has two sides, right? And after we have the new thoughts, you can see several part of the new things and several part of the bad things made a coexist in two in two in two sides. And due to COVID nineteen, you can see we had we can see a lot of bad effects like to the containers and to others and. Other things, etc. But you can see by the end of this this month, we can see the newest situations happening in the in this month. So targeted to the containers. I'd like to see that why you can see that a large scaling. I mean, scaling to number. Growing up, targeted to the container side. Thank you. I mean, you can see we can see the huge fluctuations to the container industry with the very sharp declines. And actually, we have totally surpassed four thousand. And we never see that situation before. And why we can see this very bad situation? Like just now, talk about inflation, just because of the due to the connections with the needs and the supplies. And we are standing in the right of the post areas. We still need time to build up with that. In second way. But those ships do not dock in the shores, and、uh, we again and again you can see several part of the crews were tested positive, and we can see this is common issue for right now for such a long time, and in this way, even through this. Few, I mean, few passengers. We can see a very common phenomenon. Even most of the containers, I mean, for the players, they are missing in deeply. And also,、uh, we can see less players in this market. There is a short deflat in this way. I mean, in the side of supply, supply way. For example, if we have the boats, but we didn't have the enough containers, that will be another problem, right? So we gotta see the situations. We cannot ignore the supply chains. I mean, the supply and the needs relationship between these two sides. I mean, the ships and the containers. You can see in the era of the pandemic, and they threw out the containers to to the shores, and they forgot forgot to take them back. But after all of the things back to normal, they found the containers are missing, were missing. Lots and lots of containers, box, and secondly, 
during the past two years. We didn't get well benefits through that. And in this way, um, we didn't produce much containers at that time just because we didn't see the huge opportunity at that time. But for right now, you can see in this right here, right situations of the post area of the post area of pandemic, we can see the huge demand for the containers. We didn't have the food enough, I mean the food enough capacity to produce the containers to supply that, that kind. In the last crisis, it's sort of like the hearts. I, I mean, there were some problems in, in hearts for human bodies. And now you can see that's quite equal to the financial system. Lucky enough, the financial system, we got to totally restore the volume, I mean, for the containers. Now you can see uh, Christmas going to coming, uh, Christmas going to come. And most of the people may stay at home, um, and people are, feel, are trying to feel that they want to feel the romantic feeling, etc. Sort of things like that may do some uh, impacts. I mean, some part of the very bad is efficiency to those industries just now talk about. So that is why, in this way, I think uh, all of the problems can can be conquered. I believe that totally indeed. Thank you. Thank you for your kindly comments for this con. And talking to the recruitments, and we have the very deep cooperations with those companies, right? And for this time, for the leasing Chinese companies, we have we can see they have the rapid develop in this situation. And several part of the people are quite concerned about this one. So in this way, I don't know whether are they, whether, whether, where are the operating opportunities for those parties who are involved with in the industries. Actually, this very uh, intensive industry right now. We all be involved with this one in the process of the developing. We still we, and we always need a financial system, right? Agency. They're hand in hand and close with each other and tie together. And if I really need to say to supply and to or offer the opinions to all of the parties. We got to optimize the way of the services in this in this level and this layer, and maybe all of the people who's been involved with the uh, shipping in industries, they are hoping to see these changes, and also maybe you can use some capitals or use talents as a part of and sort of the advantages to uh, sort of like that the very low cost low cost resources to enlarge the advantages and second way we gotta make it very deep I mean do the things with a very with a very key details I mean uh, with the six segments even for the management for the containers and even for the shipments as well. We can see for right now, and these directions do flip. And we can see that the directions are vague. And or we can say uh, part of Vazi. So, in the first part of the security and in the first part of the designs, maybe we can do so. And so does all of the supply chains in this way may be more beneficial and even more uh, sustainable than, than ever. Mixed it in. I totally agree with Mr. Gao's wonderful sharing. Actually, in this regard, we are standing in this liquid area. This is what we need right now compared with the past. 
And you can see uh, in old time, company is spending the money to fulfill all of the things connected with each other. But for right now, these, you can see a lot of segments existed in this part of industries. We can see more uh, directions in terms of the segments in this industry. And from my perspective, if we have the players, I mean, in this liquid area, there is no obsession. They will develop historically horizon, horizon play. And to be honest, from my perspective, I think in this way, and those who are standing in this very advanced positions, we got a value. The, the things I mean with a very high quality. So we're going to do that well, handle that well, and to a leasing company. I mean, the upgradation, optimizations, even for the uh, upgradation for the company, actually is the very important step to the leasing company, especially for those Chinese leasing company. I mean, you can see during this process of the uh, what we can call that limitation, I mean, upgradation, we're going to spend money. There are a lot of costs may be on that, but we're going to go direct, we're going to go forward, right? That is all, thank you. Well, I totally got your got the inspirations from the from the former two speakers. Yes, indeed. We sacrifice loss in this part of the industry. And due to the cost and due to the pressure in the post area of COVID nineteen. A lot of companies feel the pressures indeed, and hereby I want to say something if there is beneficial to those entrepreneurs. I mean, we still have so many potentials to do that, to fulfill our job, uh, to fulfill our wins, to better our wins, to do more balance in this way. And now you can see benefits surpassed. I mean, you can see the need surpassed the demand. The need uh, surpassed the supplies. So in this way, uh, you can see from this phenomenon, we can we can conclude that the market is well. And if we didn't need this, uh, what we can call the stop or even the products in this industry, that is totally a very bad signal to all of the people who are involved with the industry. So in this way, we really hold that. We can work together day by day by generating more products with a very uh, we can call uh, environmental protections characteristics, so as to guarantee a sustainable and healthy development for this industry. And even better, the growth for the future. And even we can control well about the risk as well. For those companies who sacrifice the time on investing that less, in, that less power uh, projects, actually, please be cautioned. And we cannot do the things with a very lazy attitude. We can control well about the risk. This is my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gu. I will transfer all of the opinions to, to those to those leaders and to those entrepreneurs. Yeah, maybe you can expand your opinions as well. Yeah, actually, maybe I have one limit left. I mean, for those leasing companies, actually, uh, they are doing great. This is the good thing for them, compared with the past. I mean, for those companies, they all originated from ship owners, I mean, like, like Germany, uh, like from Germany, from Japan. But in this way, you can see, in this right situation, they suffer a lot of opportunities, they suffer a lot of difficulties in this post area of COVID-19. And in this way, just because of this right time, Chinese, gap, Chinese enterprises fill this gap. And I think financial leasing company actually is the financial company by through the lending method to enhance the capacity, I mean, availability, 
But about how to avoid risk, we gotta focus. We gotta do more focus on the many po on the main projects, on the transmissions, transportations, and even the platform. And Mike can see uh, if you invest the, the small side of the street, maybe it's not worth it. So we got to have the very specific targets on investment. Thank you. That is my opinion, very humble opinion to those uh, shipping companies due to time constraint. We, we had full time on discussing, on discussion. Maybe you could have a few opinions to deliver, but actually the time is limited. I found four of the guys are from Shandong. Uh, actually, you are the pioneers. In your province, you are just the very top standards in these industries. Very outstanding, very impressive. And due to time constraint, we may set a request to the next time, right? Thank you. Thank you, all of the leaders being part of this session, this panelist. Session, panelists, you have any more? Thank you. 其实你们给我们带来了非常多真挚卓见的这个意见非常感谢你们我希望明年我们在上海能够面具能够用这种面对面的方式见面好吧好 we see you next year in Shanghai Thank you again Face to face Thank you Thank you all the leaders Goodbye.